Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to this tutorial about how to create a wind effect like in The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Okay, so this first step is optional, but I'm going to set up our scene so it matches thematically with what we're creating. If you want, I've added links to where you can grab this Outset Island model in the description below. I've also applied a Toon Shader to give edges this nice black outline, but this is all just flavour. Let's begin creating our wind effect. Before we create the particle system itself, let's have a quick analysis of what we're trying to achieve. Let's break down the two wind effects you can see on the island and examine what they do in their lifetimes. I got these clips from the website noclip.website. It's a great site for viewing environments from older games, you should check it out if you get the chance. So. Both effects are around 4 seconds long. To recreate a loop, we need to break down how a loop occurs. We have the two axes, vertical and horizontal. On the vertical axes we go up, then down, whilst on the horizontal axes we go forwards, backwards, and then resume our forward direction. The other effect is much simpler, having only a slight variation in the vertical axes, while always maintaining its horizontal direction. Let's start by creating the loop, as it's definitely the harder of the two. Create a particle system, name it Wind, and drag it in the project folder to make it a prefab. This isn't necessary, but I find changing the settings easier to do in the prefab view. I'm going to rotate the angle so it matches our clip. You don't have to do this, but it definitely helps when trying to match it to the effect in the Wind Waker. Again, to help us visualise what we're trying to achieve, we're going to be reducing the amount of particles on screen here. Let's remove its starting speed, because we're going to be changing this manually, and reduce the emission time to 0.2. We also want to change the start lifetime to 4, so that it matches the lifetime of the effect seen in the Wind Waker. Next we're going to want to open up the Velocity over Lifetime module, and click on this arrow to change it from constant values to curve. You may have to double click at the bottom, where it says Particle System Curves, to see the following graph. So let's deal with our horizontal axes first. By moving the line all the way to the top, you can see this will give our particles a constant direction throughout their lifetime. However, as discussed before, we want this direction to go back on itself when the looping occurs. We can do this by dipping to a negative value on the graph. I like to create the points on the graph at 01, 02 and 03. This makes it nice and easy for us later on. These coordinates are visualised whenever you're dragging a key point, but you can also right click to edit the key manually. The default speed here is kind of slow, but we can increase this by changing the number at the side of the graph. Let's change this to 10. Next we need to make the particle go up and then back down, so we can complete our loop. For this we need to change the Y axis. There's more changes in direction for this axis, so let's add in our points at these values. We're going to add two points at the same time as our x axis points, but then a further two points in between. Arrange them in this hill like pattern and change the speed again to 10. You can now see our particles are creating a nice loop. However, it's still not looking much like wind, so let's change that. We want to add a trail particle in the renderer module and then enable the Trails module of the particle system. For this, I'm going to be using a simple white circle with a transparent background that I've mapped to a material. We also don't really need the initial particle anymore, so I'm just going to map that to a material that's fully transparent. It's looking better, but our trail is still far too thick. Let's change the start size down to 0.25. So we're looking good, but we can still make this even nicer. Let's enable the Size Over Lifetime module, and make it start and end in negative values, making the trail fade in and out nicely. You can also see in Wind Waker, that the trail of the wind begins to disappear much quicker than ours does currently. You can change this by setting the Lifetime in the Trails module to something small like 0.15. Finally, to make it a bit more natural looking, we can adjust the Y value after the loop has occurred to give the trail some much needed movement, and adjust the width over trail in the trail module.
And that's it, there we have some awesome looking cartoon wind. To create the second wind effect that we saw, you can just duplicate the game object, create a new prefab from this, then go back into the velocity over time graph and just make the x axis constant and vary up some y values to give a nice flowy animation. And here is the final result. If you liked the video or found it helpful at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's going to be more game development related content on there. Uh, I'm actually using this wind effect in a game that I'm creating. I've also got a devlog on that series, which you can find on my channel. This is my first ever tutorial, so let me know if it was helpful at all, if I can improve on anything. Uh, yeah, awesome. Until next time, peace.